Hi everyone, welcome to my new video. Today I will be simplifying Bitcoin white paper for you all by giving you a complete walkthrough. But before we dive in, do subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification. Done? Then let's get started. Okay, so here's the Bitcoin white paper released by Satoshi Nakamoto. So let me just give you an overview of what we are trying to cover in this video. There are a total of 11 sections. First is introduction, then we go on to understand what are transactions then timestamp servers what exactly is timestamp uh, proof of work which is the consensus mechanism we try to understand next uh, then we get an overview of how the whole network runs and then incentives reclaiming disk, uh, disk space and uh, how to optimize that using merkle trees simplified payment verification combining and splitting value and privacy and the last one is a few calculations which are given some mathematical formulas are also given over here and a C code is provided. Finally ending with a conclusion which is the 12th and the largest uh, last one. So yeah, but uh, if I cover the entire thing in one video it will be too lengthy so I will be covering in parts. In this first part of the video I will be covering till a uh, fifth which is networks incentives and thereafter i will be covering in a subsequent video so um let's start with abstract although the abstract uh, be aware that it is quite dense compared to the rest of the sections because they are giving us gist or summary of this thing try to uh, explain you a few things but we will understand these concepts in the later section in a much better way so let's start with abstract a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. So it's saying that, okay, if only the people participating in the network are there who are running the network, then there is no need to have a financial institution or a cent centralized authority. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party, which is again a centralized institution, is still required to prevent double spending. Double spending basically is understand that whenever a transaction is happening, we need to have a person or have a system in place which checks what is the current balance of an individual account balance and how much he is trying he or she is trying to spend so a person having 100 rupees cannot spend uh, transactions of 200 rupees right if you have only 100 rupees in your bank account you can spend 100 or less than 100 and you cannot do another thing which is you just placed an order for 100 rupees and again pl placed an order for 100 rupees so that is double spending you are already uh, you are actually spending twice or multiple times the amount which you have so again the overall number of transaction amount of transaction exceeds the uh, uh, balance which you have in your account we propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network okay the network timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash based proof of work forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. This we will cover in a subsequent subsection, but uh, just to give you an idea of what they are trying to say. So the network gives a timestamp to every transaction by hashing them into an ongoing chain. So there is an existing chain and for any new transaction, it gives a, a timestamp by hashing them in that chain basis proof of work consensus mechanism forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the entire proof of work basis uh, once the chain is formed you cannot redo it entirely the longest chain so with this process so, uh, since people are continuously adding transactions one after another and also linking it with one another using hash we will try to understand just understand this part the longest a chain sort of thing is formed and the longest chain not only serves as purpose as proof of the sequence 
of events uh, witnessed but proof that it came from the largest pool of cpu power so proof of work depends on highest computational power whichever uh, pool of cpu or an individual cpu has that is the winning chain as long as a majority of cpu power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network so if majority of the cpu power is held by good nodes okay good people uh, in the network they will generate the longest chain and outpace any attacker the network itself requires minimal structure messages are broadcast on a best effort basis whoever puts the best effort broadcasts uh, his or her uh, findings of a new block to the entire network and nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will so anyone who is running the validation network can join or leave accepting the longest proof of chain as proof of what happened while they were gone so suppose a person was validating all the blocks and he came after few years and so or few days whatever he will just as accept the longest chain chain which has been formed till then so a particular individual leaving the validate validation network or peer to peer network does not halt the operation of the entire blockchain it c- uh, continues to uh, keep on going and uh, adding new blocks so this is a very important thing now what it says is no one individual can uh control the entire chain and leaving or joining of one or few individuals won't affect the chain so it's sort of it will always be there unless the entire everyone having bitcoin network has been deleted or uh, their devices have been uh, tampered with introduction commerce on the internet has come to rely almost exclusively of financial institutions serving as trusted third parties to process electronic payments while the system works well enough for most transaction it suffers from inherent weakness of the trust based model so what it means by trust based model is centralized financials so whenever we are talking about a centralized financial institution we are giving we are trusting them with our data our financials that they will be able to better manage it okay so completely non reversible transactions are not really possible since financial institutions cannot avoid mediating disputes what it says is uh, suppose there is something uh, wrong which is going on then in that case financial institutions since they are able to see all the transactions and mediate all the transactions they will get in between and try to uh, revert back the changes the cost of mediation increases transaction cost limiting the minimum practical transaction size so cost of mediation because central authority is managing all the things they are running uh, the offices employees and all those kind of things those increases the transaction cost limiting the minimum practical transaction size and cutting off the possibility for a small casual transaction and there is a broader cost in the loss of ability to make non reversible payments for non reversible services like uh, anyone can change that with the possibility of reversal the need for trust spreads because we want a system uh, at least from satoshi's point of view which i understood so this is my interpretation satoshi mentioned that with the possibility of reversal the need for trust spreads meaning he wanted a system in which we do not have to trust to some third party or centralized authority rather the people who are participating in the network are the sole um, owner of the network merchants must be wary of their customers hassling them for more information than they would otherwise need a certain percentage of fraud is acceptable as unavoidable uh, this is the concept uh, this is what people in the centralized network accept that okay certain amount of fraud is accepted unavoidable these costs now what happens is these costs and payments uncertainties can be avoided in person by using physical currency but no mechanism exists to make payments 
over a communication channel without a trusted party so in cash we can do the transaction but um, electronically this cannot be done uh, at least not before the bitcoin was introduced what is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust so cryptographically means encryptions and code that will be replaced uh, that will replace the trust based system allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need of a trusted third party so what is happening is right now there are two parties um, one is uh, the centralized authority uh, sorry the payer and the buyer and there is a centralized authority in between what bitcoin suggests is why do we need this third party to be uh, there we just can skip this per person or skip this um, authority and these two people can uh, directly interact with each other so cut bringing down the to uh, bringing down the cost improving the efficiency of the network and all those kind of things so the transactions which can be computationally which are computationally impractical to reverse would protect the sellers from fraud and routine escrow mechanisms could easily be implemented to protect buyers now here he is talking or they are talking about uh, the benefits of such a system so um, once on on the one side it can protect sellers from the fraud and on the other hand it can uh, protect buyers because so escrow is a sort of account so uh, let, let's say you hire someone for work and you give a contract so after the during the contract period what happens is the money from your bank account moves to an escrow account and which is stored there and that escrow account has a sole function that as and when the job is completed it will that escrow account with will automatically transfer the monetary value for the task uh, which was already earlier decided to the uh, person who was doing the task so in that case uh, both the interests are uh, valid so that it it does not happen that you complete the task and then also the payment is not received by you in this paper we propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer to peer distributed timestamp a server to generate computational proof of the chronological order of transactions again the same thing the system is secure as long as honest nodes collectively control more cpu power than any cooperating group of attacker nodes that's fine as long as the majority of the people are honest in the network the network is safe now we need to understand transactions but before that uh, let's summarize so bitcoin how does it work it is a peer to peer network to solve double spending problem okay network time stamps transactions uh, so what it means every net the network uh, gives a time stamp to every transaction by hashing it into ongoing change a chain and proof of work chain of is basically chain of records extremely difficult to uh, change so that's that's what uh, is the output of proof of work the longest chain serves as a proof of the sequence of events witnessed and proof that it came from the largest pool of cpu power so understand that whichever is the longest chain majority of the uh, people or nodes in the network are working on that particular chain that's why this is considered to be the honest as majority of the people in the node or in the network are considered honest that's an assumption before we move forward there is one term called hashing which will come again and again so let's get it out of our way uh, i will not talk a lot of Uh, talk in detail what exactly is hashing you can look it up but uh, just to give you an overview it is a type of encryption think of it as a type of encryption which is irreversible in nature it takes a le any length of output 1 mb file or uh, a, a character a entire pdf document but always gives a fixed length output uh, that's the special um, characteristic of hashing function and another characteristic is even a slight change in input suppose you passed in a 5000 words essay to the hashing function then even if you change a full stop or a comma the entire output will change dramatically 
entirely this is used in any type of password encryption uh, nowadays now the transaction part this is slightly tricky um, let's just go through the first paragraph we define an electronic coin as a chain of digital signatures okay any electronic coin is simply chain of digital signatures that's understood each owner transfers the coin to the next by digitally signing a hash of previous transaction and a public key of next owner and adding the, these to the end of the coin okay a payee can verify the signatures to verify the chain of ownership um i know it's it's slightly tricky so i have prepared a slide what it says is electronic coin is nothing but chain of digital signatures transferring coin means how how that happens is owner of the current coin holder needs to digitally sign the previous transaction hash so every blockchain uh, this network every block has a hash associated with that and um, as it is showing over here every block has a hash associated now the new uh, the owner has to ha sign the previous transactions hash and along with next owner's public key so there are two types of keys one is public key which one is private key private key is as the name suggests is secure and it needs to be kept secret while public key acts as an address to the account okay so the owner of the digit uh, current owner signs uh, using the previous transaction hash and next owner's public key and adds it to the end of the coin now any time someone wants to verify it the payee verifies the signature using their private key okay okay so think of it as like that there are a lot of transactions or lot of blocks which are uh, going on and the last transaction has its is the hash of this function and the public key of the new owner whoever the pay is giving the uh, paying the transaction to so this along with the private key of the owner the current owner of the transaction last transaction is hashed to create new transaction and hash of that new transaction okay uh, slightly uh, tricky but yeah that's how it works so this is a more complicated diagram of that it says the same thing previous hash owner owner one's public key that is hashed together owner's zero signature it forms and uh, owner's one uh, owner one's private key is used to sign uh, the next transaction and verify uh, the public key is used to verify the uh, given transaction now this can happen very easily if uh, there was a centralized authority the problem of course is the payee can't verify that one of the owners did not double spend the coin a common solution is to introduce a trusted central authority or mint that checks every transaction for double spending after each transaction the coin must be returned to the mint to issue a new coin and only coins issued directly from the mint are trusted not to be double spent so uh, remember this is the case of a digital transaction so what it says is we need to sign the hashes and all those kind of things but in order to verify that one of the owners did not double spend in this way we can verify that okay the transaction is coming from the person designated persons and owners they have signed the uh, values and all but this current uh, platform does not verify that the owner had that number of uh, um, amount of bitcoin or anything okay so that may uh, cause the problem of double spending so this they have given an example if there was a centralized authority how that would have fun function so let's see their example centralized way to check double spending okay so there is a payer who submits some coins to the central authority for whenever he wants he or she wants to uh, complete a transaction the central authority or mint then issues the new coin 
after checking that uh, that particular pair had uh, that sufficient number of coins and which the receiver needs to get they the central authority itself issues the new coins to the receiver so any and every coin which anyone is getting is getting directly via the central authority or mint so and the central authority has the entire ledger of transaction entire list of transaction which has happened any time because anyone is submitting coins to him, them and everyone is uh, some uh, getting coins from them so they have all the number of coins which were inputs and number of coins which were output this is the only way to confirm the absence of a transaction the only way to confirm the absence of a transaction is to be aware of all transaction correct if you want to make sure that all of the transactions are safe and secure you need to make sure that you know all of the transactions the problem with this solution is that the fate of entire monetary system depends on the company running the mint or that central authority with every transaction having to go through them just like a bank okay even though in this case we have digital signature owners themselves are si signing the documents and all but still the bank has the complete authority and knowledge of all the transaction and they are the uh, like they have a lot of power in this case so we cannot uh, say this is a, a centralized authority hence we need a way for the payee to know that the previous owners did not sign any earlier transaction so for our purpose the earliest transaction is the one that counts so we don't care about later attempts so it's the saying we will only consider only the first double spending attempt which was happened and we need to find a way uh, to know that any of the previous owners did not sign any earlier transaction so they are not double spending okay the un, uh, this is when it said the only way to confirm the absence of a transaction is to be aware of all transactions in the mint based model the mint was aware of all transactions and decided which arrived far, uh, first to accomplish this without a trusted party transactions must be publicly announced and we need a system for participants to agree on a single history of the order in which they were received okay uh, try to understand this let's break this entire sentence into multiple parts to accomplish a system where we know all the transactions without having a trusted party transactions must be publicly announced correct if transactions are publicly known that means everyone knows about all the transactions which are happening in the network then uh, that is transparent one and we need a system for participants to agree on a single history of the order in the order in which they were received okay there are two things everyone knows about all the transactions but if everyone is just publishing all the transactions someone can uh, publish fraudulent transactions as well so we need a system not only to uh, publicly announce all the transactions but also to agree on a single history meaning agree on all the correct transactions only that ha huh, these transactions are correct these are not correct and the order matter matters a lot over here like we need to also agree that okay transaction a happened then b happened then c happened so time stamps uh, which we uh, looked at before over here okay so time stamps are also very crucial in this case like we need to know all the transaction when that happened and what was the sequence of that so yep time stamps network time stamps transaction which was mentioned in abstract okay let me just go through that again the network time stamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain okay the pay needs proof that at the time of each transaction the majority of nodes agreed that it was received first okay there are a lot of transactions which are receiving uh, which people are receiving but we need to make sure that there is a system to agree on which transactions were received first and which were received uh, later on so that's when this timestamp server concept and uh, they have mentioned uh, satoshi has mentioned let's go through it 
third point timestamp server so we have looked till now that we need to prove that at, at the time of transaction what was the time of transaction that's what we need to prove the solution we propose begins with a timestamp server okay a timestamp server works by taking a hash of a block of items to be timestamped a timestamp server works by taking a hash of a block of items to be timestamped and widely publishing the hash such as in a newspaper or every block has a hash and the hash of that particular block is everyone who is finding that hash is just publishing to everyone else in the network that this is the hash which i found uh, this is the hash of the latest block or whatever the timestamp proves that the da- data must have existed at the time obviously in order to get into the hash okay so the timestamp of people publishing the hash the data proves that at that particular time the data was there in the hash each timestamp includes the previous timestamp in its hash forming a chain okay so every timestamp so we are publishing hash and each hash can store previous hash so whenever that previous block was formed the entire hash of that block is linked with the new block and uh, since it's linked forming a chain so everyone now knows that okay previous block was created at that particular point in time and new block was created at this particular point in time see so these are all the blocks of bitcoin network and we can see when was it created okay these are the hashes it looks something like this or uh, something more like this there are a lot of uh, details i will take you through this but for now okay these are the time stamps correct now um okay each time stamp includes the previous time stamp in its hash forming a chain with addition each additional time stamp reinforcing the ones before it cool this is particularly easy now a crucial point point number four proof of work so before getting into proof of work there will be a concept which will come called nonce let's cover that first so what is a nonce nonce is just an abbreviation for number only used once okay it is a number added to the hashed to a hashed or encrypted block in a blockchain to increase security just a number added in the ha- uh, in the blockchain along with the transaction and hash of previous functions to increase increase the security the nonce is the number that blockchain miners are solving for this is very important when the solution is found the blockchain miners are offered cryptocurrency in exchange so what is happening is uh, don't get intimidated by this slide so there was a last uh, suppose there were a lot of blocks coming here like m- many blocks before this and this is the last block okay in the entire blockchain now there is a new block which is formed so how will a new block be formed it will form by taking the hash of the last block okay and taking the all the transactions which happened in this new block so this is enough to create a hash but before creating the hash of new block we also add a specific number this is called nonce this nonce helps us to get desired number of zeros before hash okay and finding these zeros are exponentially difficult as and when the, we increase the number of zeros okay so how it happens is this is an example of block number 1 in the entire bitcoin block i just went on this blockchain explorer website and the current latest block number is 7 lakh 26563 okay uh, so we i just looked for first block and the first block is this one which occurred in uh, on january 9 2009 at 8:24 am uh, gmt by unknown uh, so okay uh, it has currently i don't know if you can see this okay let me just zoom zoom in okay january 9 this block was created okay 
it currently has these many confirmations on bitcoin blockchain that other people have confirmed okay so there is one person who uh, finds the block and other people in the network other nodes in the network just verify that whether all the transactions mentioned in the uh, current block which has uh, this block had zero transaction okay is that correct or not because this is a genesis block uh, let's look at the latest one okay and this this would give this would confuse you a little because the first block is always very different from any other block so this is a block which was created on march 9th 2022 which is today at 6 pm it is currently has one confirmation okay one pe person has confirmed and other people are confirming it the miner of this block earned a total reward of 6.25 bitcoins okay let's see uh, in the first block the first block reward was 50 bitcoin we will cover these in the later part of uh, this white paper but okay and this is the current value uh, according to current value this is not the then value of bitcoin okay so but this is the current value <laughs> one minute ago the miner who uh, successfully uh, got this block earned two hundred and sixty three thousand seven hundred seven dollars and twenty five cents the reward consisted a base reward of 6.25 bitcoin which is the value with an additional five thousand dollars or 0 0.12 bitcoin reward paid as a fee for 29.49 transaction 2900 around 3000 transactions which were included in this block okay so the total number of transactions which were included in this block is around 3000 and the bitcoin rewards right now is 6.25 bitcoin uh, bitcoins the bitcoin system was designed in such a way that the block rewards will continuously get on decreasing but since the bitcoin prices have in, been increasing uh, the overall rewards for the miners have always increased also the difficulty has increased substantially let me show you the difficulty this latest block had 19 zeros in front of it okay this is uh, the nonce which i was talking about the latest block had 19 zeros and the first block just had eight zeros now for in order to find um, additional one additional zero the difficulty increases exponentially okay it's not like linearly uh, increasing difficulty for example the block one okay the first block mined on in uh, 2009 had a difficulty level of one this is some term just think of one so the current difficulty is 27,550 trillion something okay and it will keep on increasing uh, in this transaction these many bitcoins were se uh, sent in this transaction which amounts to 2.9 billion dollars okay so one particular block had various transactions happening inside it the sum of all the transactions amounted to 70,006 bitcoins which is currently around 3 billion dollars these were sent in the block with average transaction being the average transaction of this block or on an average each transaction was around 23 bitcoin okay or close to a million dollar cool so uh, i will add the link of this website in the description uh, this is blockchain explorer you can check out these blocks okay you can check out all the other blocks which have been mined in blockchain or ethereum or anything else okay getting back to proof of work point number four proof of work to implement a distributed timestamp server on a peer-to-peer -peer basis we need to uh, we will need to use proof of work system similar to adam back's hash cash, which is some historical uh, thing rather than newspaper or usenet post okay so till now we have seen that we need a system where each individual broadcast the hash of their previous block or any block to the entire network and everyone has a copy of the entire network but how does this particular system works how does everyone agrees that okay whatever transaction was given is correct or not correct so that consensus consensus meaning 
that agreement everyone needs to come to an agreement and that method of everyone coming to an agreement is solved via proof of work mechanism okay the proof of work involves scanning for a value that when hashed such as with sha256 which is a type of encryption or hashing function the hash begins with a number of zero bits you already know about nonce right now okay so what it says is the proof of work mechanism involves scanning for a value okay uh, you need to find a value such that the hash uh, this code for this unique code for each of the block starts with a given set of zeros okay right now it's 19 earlier it was eight zeros as we looked uh, earlier it was eight zeros and right now it is 19 zeros so the um, difficulty the proof of work mechanism involves scanning finding that particular uh, hash which begins with this number of zeros okay the average worked requ work required is exponential in number of zeros zero bits required and can be verified by executing a single hash correct so, so we have already looked at this solving requires extreme computational power that is for sure now as and when the number of zeros in front of the hash increases the difficulty of one finding that particular hash increases as we uh, we saw in this example where the difficulty was 27550 trillion something compared to one pointer for the first block solving requires finding randomly finding that hash which contains say 10 zeros is very difficult while if you have the hash if you are the owner you have created the hash so you know okay, what is the hash of that particular function so verifying that okay this hash belongs to, to this uh, code that is very uh, easy so that is one of the functions of hash properties of hash functions which we looked uh, okay uh, that verifying something is extremely easy while solving to find among millions and billions of possible combinations uh, just one hash which contains these many zeros and these many random numbers that's very difficult as later blocks so why and the difficulty increases exponentially once the cpu effort has been expended to make it satisfy the proof of work the block cannot be changed without redoing the work okay once the cpu effort has been used to find say 10 a hash which contains 10 zeros in front of it then redoing the entire block uh, or changing the block would require you to again use that amount of computational power which is huge uh, i will link a video of number file or someone who evaluates how difficult it is to crack SHA-256 and right now we are talking about randomly guessing and checking each of those combinations there is no other way to solve this uh, apart from brute forcing okay so once the cpu effort has been expended means used to find and the hash has been found in order to again change the block we'll need to find a new hash associated with the changed block okay and that uh, uh again requires a lot of computational power as later blocks are chained after it the work to change the ha block would include redoing all the blocks after it since each block is linked to the hash of previous block okay so each new block has the hash of previous block they are linked and if you need to change the uh, block components you need to change the hash associated with it so suppose you want to make change in a hash which is three uh, blocks down the latest block so uh, th this is the latest block minus one minus two minus three okay then in order to change that particular block you will have to change all the blocks and hashes associated with it after that so you'll have to again compute all the hashes 
let me show you an example of that so this is a blockchain visualization uh, demo website i will so what is happening is this is the first block it has some nonce or some random number now the data is passed into it and that generates the hash of this particular block that hash is added to this new block which is created and all these information is used to create the hash of next block okay this is how blockchain is uh, works so each of these blocks are linked to one another okay now let me show you i just change by to capital e so what happens is see as and when i'm changing it all the blocks are changing okay see the hash of this block it changed previous block remained the same but the hash of this block changed since hash of this block changed the hash of all the subsequent blocks changed okay see yep and, and which makes it invalid because other people in the node or network would be having a different uh, hash or different hashes for each of the blocks so if i change this to capital by then what I, i would need is to mine this and create a new hash and that's pass it to the next block so again pass and see i have even if i change something in block number 3 i will have to make changes in all the subsequent blocks not in the previous blocks but all the subsequent blocks okay this is what this white paper is trying to say on this line okay the proof of work also solves the problem of determining representation in majority decision making okay the voting since it's a peer to peer network then there is no centralized authority and in a centralized authority there are board members there are directors partners senior officials and all the people having different amount of voting rights to uh, participate in the decision making of that particular organization okay in this case there is uh, only the people are there so there needs to be a representation that people can vote uh, in some manner if the majority were based on one ip address one vote meaning for each of the computer involved in the network on, uh, one vote is associated like suppose there are 100 uh, computers associated in the network one person uh, who is owning a single ip gets to gets one vote uh, right then what will happen is people would be allocating i will i will install five pcs in uh, my area and five different ip addresses i will allocate in the network all of those ip addresses are mine now what happens is i have five voting rights compared to one without any extra effort okay just i have to buy this these many allocates these many ips but uh, even if i am not participating in the network or even if i am not uh, putting in the effort to find hashes or blocks or data or uh, ma maintain transaction i will get the voting rights and even uh, larger uh, voting rights compared to others so proof of work says we won't do this we will essentially provide one cpu one vote okay what it means is the majority decision is represented by the longest chain which we have already looked which has the greatest proof of work effort invested in it okay the chain longest chain which has which most of the people have worked in the network if a majority of cpu power is controlled by honest nodes the honest chain will grow the fastest okay if majority of people are trying to increase the length of the uh, honest chain then it will grow faster because it has more computational power and everyone is trying to find that particular nonce which has 10 zeros or 13 zeros and randomly guessing so the more number of computers the easier and the faster people would be able to guess that number okay outpacing any competing uh, competing chains or the attackers who with less computational power are trying to manipulate the system to modify a blast block an attacker would have to redo all the proof of block uh, proof of work of the block and all blocks after it and then catch up with the sun pass okay if they wants to change we looked at with the example we will show later that the probability of slower attacker catching up diminishes exponentially as subsequent blocks are added cause more in okay 
although they will show later but this is a common uh, thing if more people are uh, computing or adding their computational power to a given chain and only a single person is working towards extending their own forged or fake chain then all the other people will win because they have more computational power correct and since the blockchain network provides proof of work provides one cpu one vote meaning the number of cpus or the number of computational power each cpu is providing uh, has one vote okay irrespective of ip addresses that's why the mining farms come into existence like a particular mining farm has 1000 3000 100000 pcs and specific uh, computers to mine for bitcoin to compensate for uh, okay next paragraph to compensate for increasing hardware speed and varying interest in running nodes over time okay this paper was released in 2008 by satoshi and by from then the advancement in technical or technological advancements have happened at a quite a fast pace right we, uh, the our systems have improved over time we uh, have a greater um, internet speed or cpu power or computational power in general so if the computational power is higher anyone can have the latest and more at technologically advanced cpus and computers and mine faster giving uh, getting an advantage over others so that is one point number 1 to compensate for increasing hardware speed and varying interest in running nodes over time so now the second part says that okay if at some point in time people are more interested like before 2017 no one was giving that much interest to bitcoin specifically and the interest of bitcoin has Ex- increased exponentially after 2017 and especially in covid times so with the interest more or less number of nodes and less or more or less computational power is going to going in the bitcoin network to extract uh, the uh, extract all the information or find new blocks okay the proof of work it's so for in order to compensate this the proof of work difficulty is determined by moving average targeting an average number of blocks per hour okay so right now what it says is for this the network um, adjusts itself such that as the computers become more powerful the blockchain system adjusts the difficulty such that only one block in bitcoin only one block is found every 10 minutes that's how the system is coded to uh, adjust if they are generated too fast the difficulty of uh, finding new blocks increases by increasing the number of zeros so uh, this is a very simple straightforward thing and there are steps given uh, to run the network okay the steps to run the network are as follows so we have already looked at how different components of this entire bitcoin paper was established and now we are looking at okay if someone wants to run the network this is how the network would run this is how bitcoin network would run new transactions are broadcasted to all nodes okay correct any time a new transaction comes everyone is um, uh, everyone every node or the people in the peer to peer network are informed of the new transaction each node collects new transaction into a block okay there can a single block can contain multiple transaction and all the nodes have the job to collect it all these new transactions and form a block okay. each node works on finding a difficult proof of work for its block which is basically of hash with x number of zeros in front of it like this one again i am showing this this one okay now when a node finds a proof of work it broadcasts the block to all nodes okay when a, a node or a miner finds that i a particular private key which can produce a hash with n number of zeros private key and nonce which can produce n number of zeros 
then it broadcasts that node along with that block to the entire uh, node or peer to peer network that's the point number 4 point number 5 nodes accept the block only if all the transactions in it are valid and are not already spent so all the other blocks have to check are all those valid uh, transactions valid genuine and uh, there is no double spending error or any other kind of error and this is not a fraudulent block okay that's what they check nodes express their acceptance of the block by working on creating the next block in the chain okay using the hash of the accepted block so like what is happening in this particular thing so suppose a person said this is my block this is the hash please include it in your chain so uh, the other members of the node what they will do is use this this hash to create the next block and since they are using this newly generated hash it is already added in the blockchain okay so they are basically adding the block which this particular person found and broadcast it to everyone saying that this is, has all the valid transactions upon verification by all other nodes this particular block is added by other blocks and considered in the long end, longest chain if all the transactions are true one one important property is given over here nodes always consider the longest chain to be the correct one and will keep working on extending it so if a person uh, how, how will node think that this particular chain is right or this particular chain is uh, right they will just look at the longest chain whichever is the longest chain they will assume that that is correct and subsequently if two nodes broadcast different version of the next block simultaneously suppose the length of the chain is right now same and two different blocks two different nodes broadcast two different values for next block okay one is correct and one is not correct definitely some nodes may receive one or the other first okay or both both of it can be correct but the order in which it came okay and someone received other nodes uh, received one blocks data first and other blocks data second so now we have to also determine which transaction or which block was added first okay in that case they work on the first one they received okay but save the other branch just in case it becomes longer so uh, they will receive all the blocks they will uh, work on the blocks which they received first but save the other block so remember they simultaneously got information about two blocks so the first one which they received they will keep it and this uh, and start working on that and the second work sa second block they will save it for later use until the chain on which they are working is proven by other nodes that this is the correct one okay this is a case when someone broadcast wrong information chain is confirmed only when there are sufficient many blocks added ahead of the chain okay that is called something called finality time but we will not look into that one right now the tie will be broken when the next proof of work is found and one branch becomes longer the nodes that were working on the other branch will then switch to the longer one so with time if all the good people are working on a longer chain then if someone had previously sent a wrong block and a node had included that they will say that okay not all people are working on this and this one is growing slower while the other chain is growing faster so then the node is responsible for switching to the longer and faster growing chain okay new transaction broadcast do not necessarily need to reach all nodes it's not necessary that everyone is informed then only the network will go ahead everyone will broadcast those people who did not get uh, they they will uh, just move on the chain will keep moving on as long as they reach many nodes they will get into block before long block broadcasts are also tolerant of dropped messages someone missed a message and if a node does not receive a block it will request it 
when it receives the next block and realizes it missed one okay so it might happen that since everyone is not getting uh, it's it's not making the network is not making sure that everyone has received the block um, block every node has is known to the new block information so suppose a node misses something they will just catch up with the longest chain and again start working <sighs> okay my throat is hurting now so point number six onwards incentive onwards we will look at it at a later point in time uh, next week next wednesday so do like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that when i um, and drop the new video of the second part you get informed now just quickly summarizing this okay what what i have I, actually we have covered a lot of things over here so just to skip the introduction okay we uh, satoshi nakamoto released this paper in october of 2008 he uh, wanted to remove this trust based centralized model with a peer to peer network model where electronic payments are uh, cryptographically proven that they are correct and only the people who are transacting with each other are involved in the network and no third party is involved the whole system was working on a proof of work consensus mechanism where the node which controls more cpu power is uh, gets okay gets to generate the new block and the whole system works in a block system where each block has a few information like this let me just switch to this each block has a few information like hash of the last block new all the new transaction list of new transactions and the current uh, correct transactions and a nonce so this hash of last block connects these two blocks together and they are linked if you change something in this block you will have to change all the other blocks after this after this cause uh, this new blocks hash will be used to compute the hash of the subsequent ha uh, block nonce is a number which is used to determine the difficulty like the number of zeros ahead of all the blockchain hashes hashes on the other hand are something uh, sort of an encryption there are different types of hashing algorithms like sha256 which is used in bitcoin Uh, hashes are irreversible in nature takes any length output and gives fixed length output sorry it takes any length input and gives fixed length output slight change in input creates huge changes in output uh, we can look at this so just d and the entire output changes from 0094 to 94 something okay now transactions how transactions happen uh, basically transactions uh people take the hash of last transaction add it with public key of new owner and and the owner uses private key to sign the hash and all hash and public key of new owner to create a new transaction and a new hash and uh okay then we looked at timestamp where every time someone creates a new hash broadcast that hash that at particular time i have broadcasted everything to all the other people in the network the proof of work works on a peer to peer basis where uh, um, the higher the computational power the um, greater the chances of that particular cpu finding the next block uh, or hash of the next block then we looked at how the network works new transaction broadcasted and all the steps and we looked at nonce and that's it that's it for this video uh, i will link this at this uh, slides uh, in the description and remember new bitcoins are always and only created when successful block is mined so every time you see that there are a new there is a new bitcoin yeah and then that means someone has mined it without mining you cannot generate a new bitcoin from scratch this has been quite a long video and i really appreciate your patience of hearing me for this much time and if you have watched till now thank you so so much do like the video do subscribe and support my efforts and i will try to keep improving things and until next time see you bye bye roshan